Good afternoon and welcome to the Vermont Affordable Housing Show. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, mobile home parks and their residents and current issues facing them. Uh, with me today uh, are my guests. Thank you so much, both of you, for being here. We have Sandrine Kibue uh, from CVOEO's Mobile Home Project and Vermont Tenants. Uh, Sandrine is the director of both projects. And also um, with us today is uh, Laura Mistretta, um, who works for the Mobile Home Project doing resident organizing. Uh, if I got that all right. Um, again, my name is Erhard Manka. I'm your uh, every other month uh, host. And uh, this is a call-in show. Just a reminder, uh, the call-in number uh, for any uh, question or comment you might have related to mobile home parks, mobile homes, uh, or affordable housing, uh, the call-in number is 862-3966. Um, so call in. We've got a half hour. Um, and uh, we'll field uh, any questions that, uh, that, that you might have. Uh, before we begin the show, uh, or begin uh, interviewing our guests today, uh, just a couple of reminders, a couple of announcements. Um, in, uh, even though it's summer, uh, folks in the housing world continue to uh, get together to talk about uh, housing and homelessness issues. On uh, Tuesday, August 20th, is the monthly meeting of the Vermont Coalition and Homelessness uh, in Randolph from 10 to 12. Uh, and also coming up uh, next month in September is part two of the Burlington Housing Summit. Uh, it will be from 6 to 8 p.m. at uh, City Hall, and there is a uh, link um, to uh, more information on the housing summit on um, the mayor, uh, Mayor Moreau Weinberger's uh, website. Uh, the mayor will be hosting that. Um, and again, it's part two of the summit that happened in uh, June. Um, and uh, we'll review some of the policy recommendations that came out of the, uh, the first part in, in June. Um, and we'll also have that link uh, again at the, at the end of the show. Um, so with those announcements, let's uh, turn to our guests, to uh, Sandrine and to Laura. Again, thanks so much for being here today. And uh, I know it was short notice, but these, these shows kind of come, uh, come up pretty quickly, especially when you have summer vacations going on. Uh, but maybe um, if you two could uh, start by giving uh, our viewers maybe a, a quick kind of primer on why are mobile homes an important affordable housing re resource and, uh, and especially why are mobile home parks uh, an important resource. And uh, Sandrine, maybe I'll, I'll start with you and you guys can sort of, um, you know, answer as you, as you see fit. Sure. Okay. Um, I do believe that most people know, or I hope that uh, most people know that we have about 1,291 Vermonters that are experiencing homelessness right now, um, which uh, comes to about 917 households. Um, and um, I would say just that mobile homes are a great source of affordable housing. Um, they, we have about 246 uh, mobile homes right now, uh, parks right now, um, and uh, 7,149 lots. And without, nationally speaking, we have about 8.5 million of mobile homes in the United States right now. So affordable housing is what it is um, for low and moderate income uh, Vermonters for sure. Um, so I do believe that um, this is why it's so important to talk about it today or any day, actually. Um, Laura, you want to add something to that? Sure, yeah. Um, you know, I think it's also really important to know, you know, our program mostly works with residents of mobile home parks. Um, and again, just to highlight the affordability aspect of this type of housing that is unmatched um, by any other type of housing in the state. Um, you know, lot rents are at a median statewide of about $340 a month. And considering that, Almost 90% of residents, households in Vermont's mobile home parks own their homes outright. That is cheaper than any rent you're going to get elsewhere in, in Vermont. Um, and especially that uh, most Vermonters pay uh, more than 30% of their income. Right. on housing so yeah and, and so this is a great way for folks to get into home ownership where they have a little more control I mean right. if you're in a park you don't have complete control because there's a park owner mm -hmm. could be a for-profit landlord could be a non-profit right. uh, but at least you or own co your own co-op or co-op right yes. of course I should <laughs> how could I forget I used to help organize co-ops um, so it, it's a way to get more control over your housing mm -hmm. um, but with that come some issues also right yes um, 
the Lecture Hub was uh, actually uh, trying to introduce our program. The CVOEO Mobile Room Program works with residents, um, and our services are really based on advocacy. We do provide, we have a hotline that uh, deals with concerns that they may have, and uh, referral services, and also organizing. Um, Laura talked about co-ops, uh, which is a uh, uh, a way for the mobile home residents to actually own even the soil which they rent. So this is a great uh, avenue for most of total control, uh, uh, actually via membership, but um, this is uh, basically what um, our program provide. But um, I'm gonna turn to Laura to explain exactly in a little bit more details about um, the activities that we uh, have under uh, the CVO mobile home program. Sure, yeah. Can I interrupt for one second? So CVOEO stands for? Champlain Valley Office of Economic Opportunity. Great. It's one of the five um, community action agencies serving the western part of Vermont. Thanks. Sorry to interrupt, but <laughs> it's all right, acronym really. busting here yes. for folks who are not you yes. know, familiar with all the You're housing right. jargon. You're right. Sure, yeah. Yeah, but so getting into a little bit more, you know, about what the mobile home program does and the importance of our program, um, as, as Sandrine's already mentioned and, and Erhard, you mentioned, there's challenges to owning your home and renting the land. Mm -hmm. um, you know, their park owners are responsible for providing the basic necessities, clean water, functioning septic system, you know, functional roads, electrical, maintaining trees, drainage. Um, and homeowners really, they, they own their homes for the most part, and that's what they're responsible for, is just the actual structure that is their home. Um, so if a park owner is not doing a good job of maintaining the road or the electrical system or the water system, you know, it's not as simple as not saying it's simple for a renter to have to pick up and move, but at least they could, you know, theoretically pack all their things up and move them to a new apartment if they're if that apartment's not being taken care of properly. Um, with a mobile home park, it's a lot more challenging. It can cost thousands of dollars to move a home, and a lot of homes are just very old and not able to be moved. So, so mobile in name only. Yeah, mobile in that they are initially trucked in. Yeah. Um, right. Though you know, there, with some new regulations, we might see that being a little easier, but still, it costs money um, to move these homes. So yeah, so we counsel, you know, we educate residents about their rights. Um, if a park owner is not living up to their end of the deal and providing the correct level of services, we, we give them some information about steps they can take to enforce those, those laws. Um, you know, and again, we, we work with parks on a community level when there's really big events like a really significant rent increase, um, since mobile home parks actually the only type of housing in Vermont that has some form of rent control, we work with residents throughout the media uh, mediation process. Um, we work with parks that go up for sale and educate residents about their right to form a cooperative and connect them with the correct you know resources to do that. Um, and yeah, and then as, as Sandrine said, you know a big part of this is advocacy, whether it is on the individual level, but also you know getting more interested in in sort of the statewide level right. of making sure that mobile home parks are are seen and treated as the critical source of affordable housing that they are. Sure, because I mean some people have you know attached stigmas to mobile home parks, and um, they are, as you mentioned, first of all, a great affordable housing resource. Last I remember. Uh, Sandrine, you gave the numbers earlier, but it's about seven to eight percent of the entire housing stock in the in the state of Vermont. I remember right. at one point it used to be around nine percent. Right. We've, we've lost some of that, um, but it, it's it that's still a very significant percentage. And because you have the split between the ownership of the home and somebody else owning or an organization right. owning the park, there's certain rights um, that uh, have been that lawmakers have put into um, Vermont statute in order to protect residents. You mentioned kind rent control or rent mediation mm -hmm. um, and then people have rights in, in uh, terms of when a park gets, goes up for sale or when a park uh, is potentially closed which has also mm -hmm. uh, also happened right. um, what it, maybe just I, I know it's a it's a, a, a very um, long and, and uh, sort of wonky uh, pro, uh, subject but what does happen when someone uh, when a park owner um, says they want to sell or, or close what just 
maybe quickly give folks an idea of what kind of rights people have um, in, in Vermont law and, and what you do in those situations. Sure, yeah. So um, if a, when a park owner decides they want to sell the park, um, they have to send out a notice to every single household in, this, in the park and also to the Department of Housing and Conven Community Development, who also plays a, a role in enforcing the laws, protecting mobile home park residents. And I, I have to, uh, to add that um, the Department of Housing and Community Development is one of our primary funders when it comes to our First Stop grant which actually does the work that we do at Mobile Homes. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're our, our, you know, our most consistent partner. Yeah. Um, Quick shout so. out to Arthur Hamlin, yeah. the <laughs> Department of Housing and Community Development, right. who right. used to run the Mobile Home Program yes. many years ago, but yes. um, has yeah. now been great um, partner. Very great. partnering with you guys from within yes. state government to make sure that rent their, uh, Mobile Home Park residents, residents, yeah. sorry, yes. um, residents. have their rights protected. Right. Yeah, so you know, the second that Arthur gets a notification, he sends it over to us, um, and um, the the sale notice will will say whether the sale is due to a potential closure of the park. So that would basically say if, if the park does not get sold, then the park owner is intending to close. Yeah. And that's an important piece of information to know from the start, for sure. Um, we haven't seen too many park closure notices recently. There right. there's, has been one lot closure recently. Um, but and there's different rights and different responsibilities for the owner and, and rights for the residents based on whether it's a closure or, or a sale. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. And essentially, though, if when the park goes up for sale, residents have the right to organize and sign a petition stating that they are interested in looking into the feasibility of forming a cooperative or would like to designate a nonprofit right. to do that right. work and look into purchasing the park on, you know, and managing it. And that's part of where you guys come in and you do, you, you can help them organize a right. residence association. Uh, and together with Arthur, make sure I mean, he, there's certain things he can and can't say as yeah. a state employee. Uh, you as an advocacy group out in the, in the field as a nonprofit, there may be other things that you can advise uh, and, and you have a different advocacy role in that, in that equation. Right, so uh, referral services is what we do when it comes to feasibility, of course it costs money. So uh, helping them in the process of acquiring some uh, financial assistance doing uh, the feasibility um, uh, report that is required actually to know if they are able to purchase the park or the nonprofit to do so um, and um, uh, leading them into really know how a co-op might work if it's something that they might be able to do as a community um, and uh, going forward with uh, the, the end of process which is you know um, to go forward with the um, the, the organization of the cooperative and, 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 and so that that inspection is kind of like the equivalent of if you're looking to buy a home you go out and have an inspection done to see mm -hmm. is there something wrong with the home that needs to be repaired or, or done before you buy it or you know after you buy it so that you go in with your eyes wide open so that's that's something that needs to be done when yes when of parks course go even though sale. the uh, the 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 inspection like you call it is not as extensive as it should be because of the sure. uh, infrastructures yeah. um, that we issues that we see in parks um, and uh, mostly looks at the aesthetic of the park right. you know right. um, more than anything else so um, it is a costly process of course it takes time um, but uh, we are here to help with right. Um, right. that process. And you both mentioned co-ops as one of the options. So is that something that the mobile home program does to work with residents on becoming a, a co-op if that's their, their choice? So we, we're, we would, would inform them of that option yes. and can you know, work alongside them through that mm -hmm. process. But really another critical partner in this work in here in Vermont is the Cooperative Development Institute. Um, they provide the technical assistance to actually help the board function, train the board, and, and really do a lot of the administrative background to, to forming this co-op um, and, and negotiating with the seller. And, and provide the financing in some instances. Sometimes, well. yeah, because yeah, they're, they're connected to a national network that is working to yeah. create these these co-ops. So there are mobile home cooperatives, you know, all over the country at this point. Right. And if they don't go co-op, the other option, for, you, you both mentioned nonprofits. What's what's another option um, that, um, that that we have in Vermont? 
Well, like you know, like you know, you know, you mentioned that you know when you buy a home, there'd, there'd be an, an inspection. You have to you have to make sure that the home is uh, in good state to actually buy it yeah. with the price that is offered or the price that is um, um, uh, presented. Um, and a nonprofit, um, nonprofits that are definitely uh, in some part of the state a major a major mobile home park for instance uh, owners for some ACCT which is the um, Addison County Community Trust yep. <laughs> um, uh, serving the um, um, the central part of Vermont right? or Addison, Addison County, Addison County. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes right um, and um, the process is uh, it's uh, pretty much just I would say the same as uh, a cooperative because they would be the owner of the land right. and they would be the owner of the park. So and, and leasing the lots. Leasing the lots. Yeah. So, yes. Well, great. So we do have rights and protections and these options, but um, we also know that there have been a couple of reports that have been uh, done and they kind of come, uh, I, I, I guess, in a tradition of mobile home commissions that we've had um, over many years, over 20 years, uh, looking into issues having to do with uh, mobile home parks and, and living in a mobile home park uh, in Vermont. Uh, I remember the first one, I wasn't on the first one, it was I think in 1992 or yes. 91, 92. No, I was on the last one yeah. uh, about 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, but now we have two new reports and and they raise a number of issues uh, that have been identified uh, that, that are challenges, many of them, and, and opportunities for uh, mobile home parks and their residents. So maybe, uh, I don't know, Sandrine, what, if you could maybe start talk about, you know, the, the two reports that um, we've received recently. Um, sure. Um, uh, the Vermont Housing uh, Conservative Board um, has um, done an assessment on 52 affordable mobile home parks owned by nonprofits. Um, and um, it was really to look at um, vulnerabilities and financial burden that these parks have, because yes, they do um, have some uh, issues uh, regarding uh, infrastructure as one of them that is a major one, uh, with the maintenance and uh, even um, the uh, repairs that is costly um, uh, when it comes to um, uh, the um, activity itself. Uh, and there were a second report done by Justin uh, Sussex. He was one of our um, intern from the Shepherd uh, Consensium on uh, uh, Poverty. Um, eight weeks uh, that he has been with us and provided a report talking mm -hmm. about an ongoing forum, um, which is somewhat uh, the uh, result of the assessment itself uh, from the VSCB, which is a Vermont uh, Conservative um, Housing. Uh, am I missing the name? Housing and Conservation. Vermont Housing Conservation Board. Or <laughs> I'm, VHCB sorry. I'm sorry. VHCB. No, that's yes. okay. <laughs> we all refer to it as VHCB, <laughs> but VHCB. viewers out there may not know yes. what VHCB stands for Vermont Housing and Conservation Board. So, uh, like I said, there is some. Um, a conclusion that uh, was reported, which is, you know, market, uh, marketability of the mobile home parks. I mean, young uh, Vermonters don't really have uh, that uh, attraction to uh, buy or reside in mobile homes. And probably because of the stigma, uh, there is also the uh, financial uh, capital need that we um, definitely um, is needed uh, for um, uh, mobile home parks at this point here. Um, Relocation of um, mobile home parks that are residing on the flood zone. It's something that we have seen with um, uh, Irene. Um, and the relocation, uh, even though uh, efforts were made to move some of them, but uh, we have seen a lot uh, that are still in the same flooding area, which makes it very expensive for all of them to be moved at once. It's expensive for the resident, it's expensive for the mobile home park even, um, since they will lose uh, a portion of their... Uh, for example, Tri Park down yes. in Brattleboro has Correct. a number of, they were flooded out during Tropical Storm Irene or portions okay. and, and portions have already been moved, but there's yes. a lot left a to lot do. A lot left to do. Yeah. Um, so the recommendation of the steering committee was, uh, first, for, first and foremost, um, uh, the creation of a sub, uh, subcommittee um, that we will be definitely looking at issues and uh, solutions when it comes to concerns uh, regarding mobile home parks. 
Um, and I do believe that uh, the Vermont um, <laughs> housing, Affordable Housing Coalition uh, will be the host of that subcommittee. We're willing to do that yes, if uh, you know, that's one of the things that right. coalition, the coalition can do is act as an umbrella for you know, these kinds of efforts. They're multi-sector, multi-partisan, and, and will involve a number of different players. So right. Yeah, and um, the, the second portion of that um, report highlight the need of advocating in front of the General Assembly uh, for um, some, um, of course, funding and policy change. Yeah. Um, uh, so that is really the two major recommendations that this report is highlighting. Um, do you want to add anything else, uh, well, maybe Roma, you, or you want to? Maybe a little breakdown. I mean, funding's a big kind of yeah, big, kind, yes. big issue, and and a, and a uh, you know it's multifaceted. There's a number of. Uh, uh, aspects to that, Laura. Uh, you know, I don't know if you want to talk about you know the different aspects of funding that might be needed, um, or uh, Sandrine. Sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So the VHCB report identified a number of different funding pools that would be helpful uh, for for mobile home parks in Vermont. Um, primarily, though, they're looking at you know funding to address infrastructure issues. Again, yep. those water systems, septic systems, things Electrical. like that. Yeah. Um, a lot of these parks are very old. Yeah. That three quarters of them were built before there were any codes yeah. to even regulate these systems right. going in. And there's very, so um, they're not in the best shape. Right. Um, they were built by the original owners. Um, there's not even a lot of information about some of the systems. Some were built in the 60s or, yeah. know, or before there were federal right. rules around mobile home standards right. and um, so infrastructure is one issue infrastructure what's, what's one. another one you mentioned older mobile homes yeah well. yeah so that is an that is a, a second really big issue is that there vermont does have a really old housing stock not just in our stick built homes but also in the mobile homes um and so a lot of homes were built before i think it's like 1980 something and uh, which is quite old and most are not on foundations so they're not holding up well right. and they're as some of them are literally falling apart. Yeah. Um, and so parks really struggle with that. You know, a lot of people, again, like we said earlier, it's not easy to actually move these homes. So most people do not move them, move the homes when they leave the park. They leave them behind. They abandon them. And so park owners are left with these homes mm -hmm. um, once they take ownership over them. And, and they're not cheap to get rid of. Right, they're not cheap to get rid of, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars to, to demolish a home. Um, and then, you know, but then they're, they're left there and they, need, they end up selling that home, you know, maybe for very little money, but still someone's continuing to live in this substandard home. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely a discussion about the need to have some kind of small, quicker money available to address these sorts of issues because that's a, you know, if a, there's a home abandoned, that's a lot that's not bringing in lot rent. Um, and help not helping the park. And the other maybe. issue, if you're, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes, to add to that, there is also the, the maintenance and the rehabilitation of a home for residents and themselves. I mean, um, yeah. uh, to be able to access financial assistance to um, maintain your home or to rehabilitate your home or to repair your home when you're um, a mobile home park resident is very, very uh, limited. Um, there is uh, a few, um, um, uh, funding for um, the um, when you want to become a first home buyer when it comes to mobile home yeah. uh, residents uh, through uh, so that's the a HSA. third issue right. beyond infrastructure and either rehab or replacement there's entry level how do you get into mobile home right. ownership right correct um, and um, what I wanted to say uh, because of that that really tiny access to financial assistance this is one of the um, uh, one of the major um, financial need that the uh, report actually I like mm -hmm. um, we had some success during the last legislative session on that yes <laughs> yes about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars had been increasing it was increased um, and I do believe it's uh, the revenue bill H 541 two hundred and fifty thousand increase. Yep to the state affordable housing tax credit uh, that includes also, yes. Some um, of that can be used for mobile yes, home purchase, home purchase or, replacement. or replacement. Yeah, so, so you can get yes, more energy right. efficient, that, more energy efficient <laughs> yes. home uh, or a new home. Mm -hmm. Right, correct. 
Um, the the um, other, other thing that I wanted to highlight is the, um, although the uh, statute is very uh, somewhat uh, in Vermont uh, clear um, on certain things, so when, when it comes to the habili <laughs> <laughs> I know, I have trouble with that one too. Yes. Um, the state of your home, uh, let's, just, uh, let's say that. Um, access, Good one. <laughs> yes. Uh, and because of the, the, the location of uh, some of those uh, mobile homes uh, in uh, private parks, um, the um, willing knowledge of having a town health officer coming and look through um, these um, code violations that might, they might have in their homes and, or even outside the home um, for safety and health issues, um, it, is, it, is, it is somewhat uh, very difficult to uh, access. So I do believe that the, uh, um, the Rental Advisory Board uh, mentioned the um, um, new process that will be uh, coming out for code enforcement, and I hope that uh, Mobile Homes residents will be able to uh, benefit from uh, that, that, that restructure um, in a That will only time apply soon. to rental homes, though. Yes. Uh, not, uh, um, I'm just trying to push yeah. it. Uh, so, got it. Understood. <laughs> uh, understood. Uh, yes. No, it's, it's, it's definitely been it's an issue. It's an issue, yes. A couple of years ago, it was, I remember there was legislative initiative to clarify that actually Department of Housing Community Development mm -hmm. has some um, um, some regulatory authority over uh, over conditions. Of course, the agency of natural resources has, um, yeah, they deal with sewer and septic and, and the water. Right. So it's it's like really divided up. Mm -hmm. it's, right. it's not good. Right, <laughs> right. So we, I hope that we touch that subject pretty soon. Yeah. Um, well, another very important uh, issue. So, yes. are there other policy issues? We've got maybe four minutes left. Are there other policy issues? Uh, we talked about rent mediation earlier. Is that something that you see coming up as as uh, as as an issue? Because right now, <clears throat> basically, if a park owner wants to increase uh, lot rent above the consumer price index plus one percent, mm -hmm. they have to go to mediation. There's some allowances for capital improvements, but um, well, they don't right. have to go to mediation, but residents have the right to request to mediation. Right. Yeah. But there's been some legislation that's been introduced by one of our the county senators, Senator Baruth, around uh, bringing it down, down to, to CPI. Plus 0.5. Uh, yeah. 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 Plus yeah. Uh, if you don't mind, because of the two report that we had, we yeah. talked about the, 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 the VHCB report um, and um, our um, uh, uh, intern report that actually um, bring some recommendation that the CVO mobile home program might have yeah. when it comes to that the, the formation of that subcommittee. Um, if you don't mind us uh, going through, yeah, uh, a we've little got, looks like we've got one minute left. I'm getting a signal. Oh, Sorry, one minute. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so the, the the list is pretty clear. The first thing that uh, I will mention is that uh, the subcommittee would have a very clear. Uh, the question of a clear and consistent mission statement, because um, although it would be based on what the uh, the, um, the results or the findings, the findings of the VHCB report, um, we believe that it has to be a, you know beyond that. Yeah. Uh, mobile homes are affordable housing. It needs to be known and it needs to be taken as such. And for that, policy change is a must. Financial assistance is definitely crucial. Yeah. Um, and um, also when it comes to lobbying, uh, lobbying, we have a homeless day. We have, I do believe, um, we had a domestic violence yeah. uh, day at the, uh, at, at the State House. I do believe that mobile home parks issues are so grand that we should have one day really looking at this issue um, since it is um, uh, constituting 7% yeah. of affordable housing in the state of Vermont. Um, when it comes to mediation, that's a very good uh, last point that we're going to make uh, with different maintenance. Uh, Laura, uh, please go ahead with <laughs> different <laughs> maintenance and the, the financial. We're, we're going to have to really wrap it up. Yeah, yes. that's yeah. okay. Um, the last thing we just want to say, the subcommittee, we're really excited to make sure that we're including resident voices and that we're making sure that any policies and financial you know, initiatives we're pushing for also take into account the privately owned parks where the vast majority of residents live. And we just want to be clear that that's really where, where we're hoping to, to push this group. Well, yes. sorry to cut you off at the end here. It's, it's a lot to cover in a half hour. Thank yes. you, Sandrine. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you, viewers, for uh, tuning in. We uh, have some uh, web resources, the reports, links to 
of the reports that were mentioned, yes. uh, as well as your organization, your program, and, and the Vermont Affordable Housing Coalition. And we'll uh, hopefully see you on Wednesday, October 2nd, for uh, another edition of the Vermont Affordable Housing Show uh, at 525. Thank you again.